Jennifer. Tim. And I'm Monica. Welcome to the Spooky Chat Podcast. This is a special YouTube episode, YouTube only, YouTube exclusive, not on the podcast. It is early in the morning and we usually record late at night. And I am going to show you guys how I carved out a turnip. So first off, I got my husband to go get me some turnips and he got me a few and they're kind of small. Like I don't normally eat turnips and they're kind of these like hand size little root vegetables. I bought this a little bit bigger than the potato, I guess. I mean, I enjoy turnips. I've eaten one, but I usually don't. It's not part of my daily diet. And I had to decide which side I wanted for you guys to see and also how it would stand up because it'll fall over if I didn't put it at just the right place. So the first thing I did is I cut the top off and then I scooped out the middle. Be very careful. When we do pumpkins here in the United States, we usually just cut the top off. We usually kind of scoop out the middle And you can do that with your hands, like little kids can do it, which is why it's such a fun family activity. And then, you know, as an adult, you carve the face for them and they can put the little candle in and it's done. But with these solid root vegetables, you have to scoop out the middle. So I scooped and I scooped and I scooped. And when you guys watch the video, I have like five or six knives next to me because I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to scoop this. So there are so many knives next to me. I have a butcher knife. I have, I probably put a steak knife in there, which why do I even need that? But I just used a carving knife and a spoon. The spoon actually was able to get that meat, that, that turnip meat out of the middle of the turnip enough to where I could carve it. One thing to be careful when you're doing a pumpkin, you can kind of tell when you're about to hit the outside skin if you decide to carve out more of the middle. You don't know that when you carve a turnip. <laughs> you have... Because these they're, they're pretty small, right? They are pretty small. And so if I were to gouge it a little too enthusiastically, I would have put my spoon right through the end if I wasn't paying attention. But I scooped just enough so that when I put the knife through to carve the face, it would it would look nice and it wouldn't look, there wouldn't be a lot of that turnip matter left so that the light could shine through. So, so I, did you buy more than one turnip just in case? Yes. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the one that we're going to show at the end of the video, I only did one because it actually came out really nice. So I guess why the hell am I carving a turnip? Well, we had a show, I guess it was about a year ago, our last Halloween show. It was Orbs Part 2 where we talked about carving and jack-o'-lanterns and how the original jack-o'-lanterns, quote unquote, were turnips. And I've linked in below the description of two videos that I used to find my way. How to Carve a Turnip by English Heritage and How to Make an Irish Jack-o'-lantern by It's Jordana Yo. And those are two really good videos. So after I scooped it, I cut the face and just, I can't emphasize enough, please be careful because while I was doing this, there was a point where I did cut myself. So I think there's going to be a break towards the end of the video because I had to go and I had to wipe my thumb off. But if you don't cut yourself, (laughs) by the end of the video, you actually end up with a lot of nice turnip pulp that you could steam and add to maybe mashed potatoes, put it with some butter, and it would actually be pretty good. Like it's already kind of mashed. You just kind of add it in. So bloody turnip pulp? No. <laughs> I didn't. This time. So when you cut a pumpkin, do you guys, when you carve a pumpkin, do you guys um, reuse like the seeds or like use the seeds and eat the insides? If I was at my mom's, I would use the seeds I've, and not the inside. I've tried to. And see, I've used the inside, but it takes, it feels like it takes a really long time to cook down to make it an actual consistency where I can put it in a pie. So I've made pumpkin pie from scratch and it's just like, it's so much work to cut the pumpkin up. And then if you're going to boil it or steam it, however you're going to prepare it and then mash that up with probably a food processor rather than trying to use like a potato masher You have to Mm -hmm. use like a food processor to get it to the consistency that you get from a can. I thought you just boil it though and it just softens. It softens, but it's still like, I don't know. When I did it, I just felt like I wanted a certain consistency and I could not get to that consistency. 
I know my mom used to used to cook the pumpkin. I, I definitely remember we used to roast the pumpkin seeds, and those are so good. I should probably do that this year. They are, but it just feels like it's so time-consuming to get all of that gooey stuff off the seeds. True. I don't know. Maybe I just like things, like, right now. Like, I just like it like that. That's that's why you carved a turnip. Yeah, that's true, Jay. <laughs> that's why I carved one turnip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did not carve more than one. So I tried to carve teeth, but it didn't come out so great. So I ended up just kind of, I mean, the teeth are kind of there, but I ended up kind of scrapping it. And then by the end, I patted it dry and I put in a battery operated tea light. So I have a lot of regular tea lights that you light with a lighter, but for like food stuff or stuff that I'm going to leave out a long time, I use the battery operated. I also made some candles that were toilet paper rolls. I painted them white and I put hot glue around the edge to make it look like it was dripping. And I painted that red to make blood. So I made it, I made um, candles and I put those tea lights on top and I strung them up to make it look like they were floating candles, like from Harry Potter. So that's why yeah. I bought like a whole bunch of tea lights. And I bu- just bought those on Amazon. They were like 10 bucks for a pack of 24. And they actually kind of flicker. So if you want to get those, that's I thought that cool. made a good effect. And so you should be looking at the f- finished product or we're about to get to the finished product of that pumpkin. And it was pretty fun. It's a turnip. Oh, that's right. It's a turnip. (laughs) The finished product of the turnip, the root vegetable. I used a turnip, but in other places of the world, when they say turnip, they mean what I traditionally think of as a rutabaga. And in the video where she carves an Irish jack-o'-lantern, she's actually using a rutabaga. I don't even know what a rutabaga is. Yeah, it just sounds like, is it a root? (laughs) Yeah, it's it's a bigger root vegetable. It's between the size of what we traditionally think of as a turnip and a pumpkin. It's between that size. Ah. And it is solid. So again, you have to cut it open and carve it out with a knife or a spoon. And it seemed like that fleshy part of the rutabaga was a lot harder than my turnip. Uh, Monica, you had a comment or a question? So I couldn't imagine what a turnip carved would look like because I thought they were too small. So when you showed us the finished product, I thought it was super cute. Right. Just a little smiley face. It was really cute. I was like, I I feel like this isn't scaring off any kind of demons because it's really cute. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, I had my daughter, or maybe it was me. No, it was my daughter. Hold it in her hand. And so... If you're to this point and the pumpkin's uh, pumpkin and the turnip is moving really quickly, it's because she's moving it back and forth really quickly. (laughs) But yeah, it worked out. I couldn't believe it. I was like, this isn't going to work. I'm going to have to do this several times. But first try, it came out. So do you think that there or did you see are are there any other types of vegetables that you can possibly carve that are like that? Like maybe a zucchini? (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, you probably I've got could. a couple of those that are going bad in my brain. <laughs> you probably could carve a zucchini, but can you get a light small enough to fit in the zucchini? Good question. Maybe you could put some string lights through it. True. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, that would be pretty cool. So, yes, there are records of people carving out potatoes and just other kind of root vegetables oh, that have that same effect. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess you use what you have, right? Yes. And you could probably do like um, what a carbon potato. maybe a squash, like a butternut squash. You could probably, cool. you know, theoretically carve out a butternut squash and make like a weird looking long face jack-o'-lantern. But I mean, I guess the point is to scare away demons. So if you use a vegetable that the demons like or don't like, that might affect the outcome of what happens with the demon. Yes, yes. And I think I did this a few weeks ago and we have citric acid in our house. So I just combined that with a little bit of water, put the turnip in there and then I put it in the refrigerator and he's still there. He, I mean, he's a little bit shriveled, so it actually gives it a better effect. How does he smell? (laughs) He doesn't smell at all because he's in a refrigerator. Oh, yeah. So that was to preserve it? Yes. Yes. The citric acid acted as a preservative. And it's only just a little shriveled, but it still has that turnip purple color. But other than that, he looks great. Super cute. 
Well, thank you guys for tuning in to this exclusive. Don't forget to check out the podcast because we do have our Halloween episode that should be released later today. Thank you to the other two YouTube channels that I use as kind of a guide. And they're really super informative. So check those two videos out. Thank you. Thank you for carving the turnip. You're welcome. (laughs) Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Uh, Tim, where can people find us, find the podcast? People People can find us anywhere that you can listen to podcasts. You can find us on iTunes, on Stitcher, Google Play, Buzzsprout. You can also contact us. We're on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at Spooky Chat Pod. You can find us on Instagram, Spooky underscore Chat underscore Podcast on Instagram. We also have a page on Facebook, Spooky Chat Podcast. And you can send us your thoughts, feelings, opinions, emotions to Spooky Chat Podcast at gmail.com. We love getting emails. And thank you to Forrest Wilson for our music gallows. Thank you, Forrest. They say spooky babies. Happy Halloween, spooky babies. (laughs) (laughs) Try it again. Stay safe, spooky babies. Happy Halloween, spooky babies. You guys know I'm going to use the first one, right? (laughs) You guys know she's going to use both of them, right? (laughs) I'm going to fucking burn this fucking laptop, I swear to God. Right? JJ, did you see the message I just sent you? I'm just kidding. What? (sighs) Damn. Yeah, I was joking. Well, Monica, if you could see me, I am drinking from a tall, Snoopy, Aww. mummy mug. I love Snoopy. Pike's Place, some Starbucks Pike's Place K-Cup coffee.